before we even get into the reactions today, am I balding? Yes or no? I don't, I don't know, dude. If I am, it's not bad. I feel, I, I think slightly. Like, it should be here, and it's there. Insane ways the queen survived three uh, assassination attempts. I have had a death guess on the queen of England. I think it was in June or July. If she dies in June or July, I predicted it. That's all I'm going to say. I shouldn't have said that. Now I'm on a watch list. Now I'm on now I'm on a UK watch list. We're going to start with the most What if the dude from the infographics show murders Queen Elizabeth? Like at the end of the video he says, "But my plan won't fail." And then he deletes his YouTube account. The perpetrator of the crime, a 17-year-old kid named Christopher John Lewis. You might wonder why a teen would want to blast Why would you want to kill the queen? Why would anyone want to kill the queen? She's such a like I know I joke about this shit of like when you're predicting her death because it was like a trend. But, like, dude, she's, like, a nice woman. Like, she genuinely looks like a nice woman. According to news reports, this boy lived in a house with a tyrannical father. Life was so chaotic for the kid that he couldn't even read or write until he was eight years old. After assaulting another kid, he was expelled from school. He cut the heads off birds. His favorite man in the world was none other than Charles Manson. He okay, well, this kid's just a fucking psychopath. Why, you didn't even, you didn't even need to give me a motivation story for why he wanted to kill the queen. He cut off... Pigeon's heads, and his favorite person is Charles Manson. Okay. But he didn't stop there. He and his mates put together what they called the Guerrilla Army. They gave the outfit the name the National Imperial Guerrilla Army, spelling guerrilla wrong. With Lewis at the helm, they terrorized the neighborhood. Those that were close to him knew him as a bona fide psycho. As an adult, he wouldn't disagree. We know that from his memoirs, aptly titled Last Words. It was during these tumultuous years that he concocted a plan to do something to the queen that would put his name in the history books. He later said that living with his father was a living hell, which rendered him feeling in a constant state of terror. It's hard to say why he wanted to go as far as killing the queen, but he blamed what he called the twisted wreckage of his life and the fact that he very dearly wanted to become an outlaw. He was close to it already, feared in his town for many reasons, such as when he held up an elderly woman in her car and demanded a ride. And so on October 14th, 19- How did he not get arrested? Like, if he's committed these crimes where, like, he could feasibly easily be caught, how has he already not been arrested? This, his getaway vehicle, a 10-speed bicycle, he left outside the building. Inside, he sneaked into a toilet cubicle and unwrapped his gun. He was seething with anger when he put on his gloves and readied the rifle. The queen, he knew, would soon pass by in the street in her Rolls Royce. As the motorcade got closer, his hands trembled as he heard the cheers of the many people in the street. He stood up by the window and waited, his gun pointing toward the road. Suddenly, a loud crack was heard by many people in the crowd. The queen had just stepped out of her car. She wasn't hurt. The shot wasn't very close. If Lewis actually meant to kill her is not certain. He later said he didn't actually want her dead, stating, I felt that giving her a scare somehow, that the issues and problems that were evident in New Zealand might finally be brought into the public attention. And as a bonus, if the queen would look at these issues, she might well take notice. I shot at her so she would recognize the country's issues. Nah, you wanted a domer. When he was charged, all the public heard was that his crime was illegally possessing a firearm and illegally discharging one, not that he had tried to kill the queen. As we said, people in the crowd that day had heard gunshots, but cops later assured them and some curious journalists that it was nothing but an unrelated racket. Only two charges? What? Had the bullet hit her, would it be treason? But the whole story remained classified until February 2018, when a media company found out the truth. By this time, Lewis was long since dead. His death is a grim story if there ever was one. After the incident, he was sent to a psychiatric hospital. There, he once pulled a knife on a guard, and in his spare time, he concocted another plan to take out Prince Charles. What is with him wanting to kill people in, in, in the fucking, like, royal family? What, what, what's up with that? Why'd they edit the queen like that? Why is everyone else just, like, a 2D, like, flat character and the queen actually has like features it happened again in the same year on june 13th 1981 this time the queen was on home turf and again her would-be assassin was just 17 years old his name was marcus Sargent. On what is with 17 year olds trying to murder queen elizabeth that day, the crowds filled the street as the soon-to-be-married Diana Spencer rode in a carriage with Prince Andrew. Her lover and future husband, Prince Charles, like the Queen, rode on horseback. Sargent didn't have anything near the psychological problems that her first assassin had. He was a Boy Scout who'd done pretty well in school, and as a youth, he'd won awards for marksmanship at the Air Training Corps, a kind of cadet school for young folks. But then, at the age of 16, things started to go wrong for him. He joined the British Royal Marines, but left after a few months for what he later said was bullying. He then joined the Army and only managed to 
to get through two days of induction. To add to this list of failures, he was also turned down by the police and the fire brigade. Jesus. Angry and disappointed in himself, he ended up working at a zoo. At age 17, he was out of work again, and he'd taken upon himself to become a member of an anti-royalist group. Things could have really gone badly for the Queen if this young lad hadn't failed in finding ammunition for his pop's 455 Webley revolver. Dude, I just feel like they have the worst plans. I'm not trying to teach somebody how to kill someone, and I also have never killed somebody myself, so I don't know how to fucking do this shit. But I just feel like they're strolling in with a gun with three bullets, and they just fucking, they fucking opposite of their dominant hand aim sideways and fucking miss. Like, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Thanks for the advice, Joe. Stop two. it. Stop it. If he couldn't kill her, he was damn well gonna scare her. Not long before he did the deed, he actually sent a letter to Buckingham Palace stating, Your Majesty, don't go on the trooping color ceremony because there was an assassin set up to kill you waiting just outside the palace. The letter arrived three days after the ceremony. What? As she rode on her horse, Sergeant seemed to appear from Wait, nowhere. why did he write that letter? As she rode on her horse, what? Sergeant seemed to appear from nowhere and fired off six this is an actual picture? No shot. How did you miss from- Okay, I'm not trying- Nah, okay, see, now that seems fucked up like I want her to die. I don't want her to die. I'm just saying, like, you're very close. Like, how did you- How did- How did you miss? And fired off six shots. Needless to say, this shocked and scared onlookers. No bullets came out of the gun, of course, but the noise frightened the queen's horse. Oh, what? Oh, so he wasn't trying to kill her. He was just using the replica. He told the press she looked shaken by the episode, but soon recovered her composure. Sergeant was charged with the 1848 Treason Act and sentenced to five years in prison. It turned out that this failure of a kid had been obsessed with the assassinations of John Lennon and John F. Kennedy. When investigators unearthed his diary, one of the entries read, I'm going to stun and mystify the whole world with nothing more than a gun. I will become the most famous teenager in the world. He didn't deny it later, telling the cops to their face, I wanted to be famous. I wanted to be a somebody. Psychiatrist didn't think he had any kind of severe mental health issues, saying he was merely a messed up, insecure kid who'd studied the Lennon assassination and couldn't believe how easy it had been. He thought, why not? I would like to be the first one to take a pot shot at the Queen. He gave himself a new identity. All the time he'd been locked up, he apparently sent letters to the Queen apologizing for what he'd done. She didn't reply once. Sorry I shot at you, Queen. My B. Won't do it again. Heart, heart. And that brings us to another cover-up, easily the strangest tale of the three assassination attempts. Like the New Zealand attempt on her life, the story only became public knowledge many For years how after. How old is she? She's 95, I was right. Damn. The queen learned how to counter strafe. Facts. She learned how to AD key. She dodged the bullets. Fucking... The incident happened close to the town of Lithgow, population of 13,000. We now know that prior to her boarding that train, someone had laid down a large log on the tracks. At around 7 feet long and about 8 inches in diameter, it was big enough to derail the train. Someone had obviously left it there in the dark and they'd wedged it in enough so that it would do some serious damage. In fact, Damn, I never thought about that. I never thought about the fact that you could just derail a train anytime you wanted. Middle of the night, you know train path? Jam a log into the track derail it you'd probably get caught 100 percent. but like, you're probably gonna get caught yeah dragging a tree dragging an entire tree to the train tracks hey uh, no if an officer just happens to ride by you what are you doing oh you know just you know just just dragging the tree around it's 3 a.m and uh, you know just drag can you get arrested for that just being really suspicious i could just walk around at 3 a.m in the middle of the night and just act really suspicious like, I'm not gonna do anything wrong, but I could act like, like, I could just, like, drag a tree trunk. Like, right by a police officer. I know, like, say I know a police officer's there at, like, 2 a.m. I just walk by with, like, a dead fish in a tree trunk, and I'm just, like, I'm, like, hobbling or something. I would want to see, I would want to see what would happen. Like, is that, like, reasonable suspicion they could, like, arrest me because I'm being weird? Why are you dragging that? You know. Just just wanted to take it for a walk. You just place it by the, the, the train tracks. He's like, yo, you can't do that. And then you just you hit a full on sprint. Had it been traveling at the usual speed, there is every chance it could have derailed and the queen been seriously injured or killed. A report written many years later said the train continued on brakes for about 200 meters with the logs still wedged under the front wheels before finally coming to a halt at the level crossing near Bowenfell Station. As things turned out, the Queen didn't know a thing about it. The Australian cops didn't report the matter, and a local newspaper that knew what had happened made a so-called gentleman's agreement with the cops not to publish the story and so embarrass them and the country. The newspaper, the Lithgow Mercury,
history kept hold of the story for close to 40 years. One of the investigators later admitted he pulled the editor to the side and told him not to publish the story. He said, I took him for a drive and I told him the story and I said, I want your assurance that you don't print it. And he didn't print it. For many years, Australian cops investigated the plot, but nothing came of it. One of the reasons for that was because they couldn't actually talk to many people about what had happened. The lead investigator recalled, We never came up with any decent suspects because if we interviewed people, we seemed to be talking in riddles. Who was behind the plot remains a mystery, with IRA sympathizers being high on the list of suspects. Still, it could have been another picture? kid trying to make a name for himself or just a regular run-of-the-mill loon. It seems Buckingham Palace had also been kept in the dark all those years, although it's possible the British authorities also kept the story under wraps. In 2009, the palace issued a statement saying it didn't want to comment on the matter, but in the royal diary there was no mention of anything strange happening on the train that day. What does the British Queen do all day when she's not cutting ribbons or waving to people from gilded horse-drawn carriages? Probably she's human, sleeping. of course, so we know she wakes up in the morning, likely heads over to the bathroom, gets dressed, and then later has a bit of breakfast. But what's in between? Does she turn on morning TV, read the newspaper, check her social media accounts, call her friends or Google her name to see what the media is saying about her? Maybe she heads over to YouTube to see the latest infographics show installment. That might sound funny to you, but the Queen- I highly doubt that she watches the infographics show. She was in second place for a long time until Thailand's Bumibu Arunyede passed away in 2016. So when it comes to work experience, she has the longest resume. You can just imagine what that looks like. But what's her job? Like, what do you do? Occupation, queen. Date started, 1952. Duties, trying to stay neutral in politics. Meeting with the prime minister, a lot. Traveling around, ceremonies, lots of ceremonies. Looking at bios of Queen Elizabeth, we hear things like she does a lot for charity. She likes riding horses, and we know that for sure because we can- I honestly do not believe that she still rides horses. I am calling cap on that. She is 95 years old. There's no fucking chance she can get on a horse without breaking her spine. Surely she must have seen Breaking Bad or perhaps gets down with some good literature now and again. You Let's think she cooks meth? You think the queen cooks meth like in Breaking Bad? Crystal meth? She takes a bath in the morning, but first the police officer standing outside her room will clock off from his shift. The time is usually around 7.30 a.m. The first thing she does, of course, is go to the bathroom, and while we can't exactly say what she does in there, the Daily Mail reports that she does take a daily bath. The water, the report said, is seven inches deep, and a servant will always test the temperature with a- That's fucking weird. Why- Why do we know the fuck- Why do we know that- Oh, there's exactly seven inches of water in there, and the temperature is exactly, like, what? She might have to change the outfit, though, as many as five times during the day. The male says the queen never chooses any five different outfits, any of them, and relies on these people to make the right fashion choice. Of course, her style is all based on what she'll be doing, so the people in charge of dressing her know exactly where the queen will be going all day long. Once a week after this, she'll get a haircut, and this is done by a special royal barber, and she might listen to BBC Radio 4 around this time. If she's not getting a cut, another of the servants will be in charge of brushing the queen's hair and making sure she keeps that style she's had for a very long time. Apparently, the first thing she does after this is look at the day's newspapers. Some sources say she replies to some of them, but it's more likely that if any reply is given, that it's her ladies-in-waiting or her private secretaries. She might also- I'm allowed to write to the queen. Do you think she's nice? Yeah, she looks nice, or she seems nice. Based off this, she, does, she doesn't seem, like, picky. In one case, one of these aides replied to a letter from a young boy who had written to the queen and said he liked horses and would she like to see his. This is the reply. Although unable to accept your invitation to come to your house for tea because of her very busy schedule, the queen greatly appreciated your kind thought of her and her majesty was pleased to learn that you too like horses. Mega cringe, go to the kid's house. You're supposed to start it with madam and end it with I have the honor to be madam your majesty's humble and obedient servant, but what? apparently she won't complain if you slack on the formalities. After the mail is done, she then meets with her private secretaries and talks about her official papers and documents. She may also have a- How much money she got? How much is the queen worth? Let's, let's give this a Google. 530 million. Oh, wow, wow. Then it's time for lunch, and she takes that privately or she entertains guests. But what does she like to eat? She loves chocolate and she loves biscuits, aka cookies, with her tea. On a normal day, she'll eat four times. For breakfast, she reportedly likes cereal, maybe a boiled egg, and some tea. Her favorite cereal is Special K, Quaker Oats, and Weetabix. On other days, she might just have toast and marmalade. According to that- Oh my god, you're the Queen of England! Need some eggs or something! Fuck, what? 
If I'm if I'm the fucking king of England, oh I'm fucking oh I'm I'm relishing in 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 the English breakfasts. Apparently for lunch she only eats small portions, but she has a vice in that with lunch she'll usually sip a gin and Dubonnet. That's a the sweet queen actually chugs an entire bottle of Svetka vodka every day. What if they just threw in so I would throw in a random fact. She actually just slugs fifths of whiskey. Like, just downs them. This is washed down with champagne, and if the mood takes her, she might use one of these condiments with her meal. Lee and Perrin's, HP sauce, and Heinz ketchup. We spent some time on that, but it's very important to know that eating is a big part of her daily routine. It seems her very diet and Eating is, the, is a big part of your routine? Eating? Bitch, I will eat a- I will eat while I'm doing other shit. I don't give a fuck. The Daily Mail suggests that she might take a walk in the gardens, and for this she likes to be alone. The afternoon might be busy, but that depends on whether she has royal engagements. When she does, she might visit four places a day. Before this, she has read a brief about who she'll be meeting. In 2016, she had 430 of these kinds of engagements over the entire year. This keeps her pretty busy, and she'll do the visits by region if possible, so she doesn't have to travel much. At the end of the afternoon, she might see her privy council and also government ministers. That's pretty much the day done, and she can settle for dinner that we But, like, what are the meetings about? Like, like assets and stuff? Like, does she have that type of power where she needs to do that shit? Well, she may have a show to go to or have to host an event within the palace, but this doesn't happen much and especially at her age now. In the past, she was much more active in the evening. If she's got nothing to do, there's one thing she loves, and that's watching TV. Apparently, Dub. she has seen the Netflix show which depicts her own life called The Crown. It was her son. Oh, she probably watches the worst shows on Netflix. The worst shows on Netflix. A royal source told a British newspaper this. They have a Netflix account and urged her to watch it with them. Happily, she really liked it, although obviously there were some depictions of events that she found too heavily dramatized. But The Crown isn't her favorite TV treat, and she loves mm. British game shows. She's also into British TV drama centered around the police force, the soap opera EastEnders, the show Downton Abbey. And oh, the soap operas. I cannot wait for soap operas to be fucking gone forever. I I will be ecstatic when I, I that's the one thing. I'm not saying I want old people to die, but like only old people watch fucking soap operas. It takes up like a five hour chunk on TV. It's a waste of money. They're shitty actors. I have never met anyone under the age of 65 that watches fucking soap operas. They're all for old people. Somebody dies every episode. We expect at this age, though, being buzzed from her champagne, she might quickly fall asleep as the TV plays. If she reads, she seems to go for the page-turning thriller novel and, better still, stories with horse racing in them. What? So Queen Elizabeth is a horse girl, is what you're telling me. Queen is overrated? Okay.